In this Cadillac Service Roundtable release, we will introduce the all-new HT4100 digital fuel injection Cadillac engine and describe many of the service features that are unique to this 4.1-liter 90-degree V8 engine. Engine assembly at the factory is an interesting feature of the 4.1-liter 90-degree V8 engine. This is the point where each engine is followed throughout assembly by an advanced technology computer system. This system is responsible for catching any possible substandard conditions that could ultimately affect the operation of the engine. After each engine has been assembled, it is run through a hot test sequence that monitors operating conditions, such as coolant and oil temperature and brake horsepower, as well as other operating parameters. As a result, the HT4100 DFI engine is designed to provide customers with years of dependable service. Like any other engine, it will require a certain amount of maintenance. When viewing this engine from a service perspective, you'll begin to notice that there are certain design characteristics which will require service procedures different from those used on other gasoline-fueled engines. For instance, there are replaceable cast iron cylinder liner assemblies. And the new steel oil pan that is made corrosion resistant with zinc dichromate, which gives it a unique appearance. Also, the bolt holes are repairable with the helicoil thread repair kit. Let's begin by taking a look at the HT4100 DFI engine from a structural point of view and examine the various parts as well as service procedures required on this Cadillac engine. Starting with the composition alloy cylinder block, the foundation of the 4.1 liter 90 degree V8 engine represents somewhat of a departure from what we may have known in the past. Included in the separate valve lifter carrier assembly on this engine are the main oil galleries. Crankshaft main bearing service and installation procedures are basically the same on this engine. The number three main bearing is the thrust bearing for the crankshaft. The rear main bearing cap is designed for both sealing capability and strength. When replacing the rear main bearing, install each half of a new rear main bearing oil seal in both the block and the cap. Then install the bearing inserts. Next, place a bead of RTV sealant in the corners of the bearing cap mating surface location on the block. This lessens the possibility of engine oil leaks at these locations. After the crankshaft is installed and the rear main bearing cap with new seal is bolted in position, additional RTV sealant is applied in the grooves at the sides of the cap location in the block to seal between the cap and the block. Watch for a small amount of sealant to appear at the bottom of the cap to be sure that sufficient sealant has been applied. Note that one of the rear main bearing cap bolts has a stud head for the mounting of the oil pump. This bolt is positioned to the right rear side of the crankcase. After you have inserted and tightened each bearing bolt by hand, torque each bolt to the proper newton meters tension according to the service information manual. Almost all tools and measurements required to service this engine use the metric system of measurement. Properly lubricate the engine camshaft and bearing inserts before positioning the camshaft in the block. Rotate the camshaft slightly as it is inserted. This reduces the possibility of damage to the camshaft or bearings during installation and helps distribute the lubricant on the journals. Next, put the timing chain on the gears and align the timing marks on the gears. Install the timing gears and chain together, being sure the cam gear is properly aligned with the dowel and the special locating pin used for this purpose. Then, install the bolt. Next, rotate the engine on the stand so that it is in the proper position to insert the cylinder liners into the block. The cast iron cylinder liners are another new feature of the 4.1 liter 90 degree V8 engine. If liner replacement becomes necessary, the piston and cylinder liner are supplied in matched sets and can be put in any cylinder position in the engine block. If the liner and piston rod assembly is removed for service and replacement is not necessary, the liner must go back in the same location from which it was removed. If cylinder liner replacement is necessary, you will need a cylinder liner measuring gauge. 
which is required for measurement of individual cylinder liner height to the block as well as liner to liner heights. This gauge is used to make sure that each liner is precisely the right height for proper sealing to the engine block and cylinder head gaskets. According to the service information manual, this gauging procedure is done without seals installed on the liners. After gauging is complete, mark the liner position with a marking pen to ensure that it is repositioned exactly as gauged when removed to install the seal. Next, install a new O-ring seal and position it in the groove around the cylinder liner. Then position the liner within the cylinder bore, making sure to index the ink mark on the liner with the mark on the block. After the cylinder liners are in place on one side of the engine, install the cylinder liner retainer. This special tool is used to hold the cylinder liners in place when the engine and crankshaft are rotated for the service procedures that follow. The next step calls for installation of the piston rod assembly. Check to be sure that the notch on top of each piston is positioned to face the front of the engine. Then using a ring compressor tool, install each piston rod assembly into the cylinder liner. After the piston rod assemblies are in place, install the connecting rod bearing caps and tighten to the correct torque specification. Before you go on to install the front cover, mount the water pump assembly so that the cover and water pump can be installed together. If the front seal is also replaced, it is installed using the proper special tool. Next, position the front cover on the locating dowels. Secure the front cover to the block with three screws and torque to the proper newton meters tension. Then install the oil pump. Its location on this engine is at the right rear of the crankcase. An O-ring is used to seal the pump outlet pipe to the crankcase. To complete the installation, secure the pump body to the crankcase with two bolts and one nut and torque to the correct newton meter specification. To prepare the oil pan for installation, a continuous bead of RTV sealant is applied to the sealing surface of the oil pan. Now lower the oil pan in place on the block. Press the pan into the proper position and install the bolts and nuts used to secure the oil pan. Then torque all fasteners to the correct tension. Next, install the front hub on the crankshaft using the proper special tool. Before we go on to install the hydraulic valve lifters, let's stop and see just how the lightweight alloy casting lifter carrier is designed for the HT4100 DFI engine. As previously mentioned, the main oil galleries are incorporated into the lifter carrier. The lower part of the lifter carrier is actually the upper part of the camshaft bearing journal. Therefore, do not attempt to loosen the lifter carrier bolts or disturb the carrier in any way. The lifter carrier is not to be serviced separately and is only supplied with a block assembly. After turning the engine to the correct position, install the valve lifters. The important thing to remember is that they are always replaced in the same bore from which they were removed. Next, looking at cylinder head service, if a valve has been removed, a new valve seal must be installed on the guide using the valve seal installer. Properly seat the valve seal, then insert the valve stem through the guide in the cylinder head. With the retainer in position and the valve spring compressed with an available tool, place them over the valve stem. Install the valve stem keys and release the compressor tool while checking that both the spring and keys are properly positioned and seated. Like many other engine parts on the 4.1 liter 90 degree V8 engine, the cylinder head has also been designed to help control overall engine weight, an important factor in providing maximum fuel efficiency. For example, the head itself is smaller in size than previous applications because the intake manifold has been extended further outboard. To install the cylinder head on this engine, first reposition the engine on the stand and check to be sure the head gasket surface is perfectly clean 
and that the gasket is in the proper position before the cylinder head is lowered in place. Next, carefully lower the cylinder head in place onto the gasket, positioning it on the dowels. Then insert a bolt to hold it in place. With the cylinder head held in position, insert and carefully seat all the head bolts. Then use a torque wrench to torque the bolts to the proper tension. Refer to the correct torquing sequence in the service manual. The intake manifold developed for the 4.1 liter 90 degree V8 engine takes on this appearance. It's cast of a lightweight composition alloy and is of a single plane design. The intake manifold has cast passages for coolant circulation as well as specially designed porting, which contributes to improved fuel efficiency and engine balance. Before the intake manifold can be installed, you'll first need to assemble the thermostat housing to the manifold while it is still on the bench. With two O-ring seals installed on the thermostat housing adapter, or sleeve, assemble the thermostat housing to the intake manifold. Next, lubricate and install the third O-ring seal on the water pump outlet that connects to the thermostat housing. The thermostat housing is designed so that it can be removed with the intake manifold or the water pump assembly to enhance serviceability. To prepare the engine block for installation of the intake manifold, put a small amount of RTV sealant at each corner where the cylinder head and block mate. Then position the end seals on the engine block and press down firmly so they are secure. Place additional sealant on top of the end seals where they are recessed for the intake manifold gasket tabs. Next, position the intake manifold gaskets so that they are set in the formed notches of the end seals. Then press firmly in place. Now carefully lower the entire intake manifold and thermostat housing assembly, being careful to line up the lower seal in the thermostat housing assembly to the water pump outlet as the manifold is lowered in place. Refer to the service manual for proper torquing procedures. Next, we'll take a look at the valve train components, which include the push rods, rocker arms, rocker arm pivots, and valve train support bars. After being dipped in oil, the push rods are inserted through access holes in the intake manifold and carefully positioned on the valve lifters. If for any reason the rocker arms, the rocker arm pivots, or the valve train support bars require service, it's important to follow this procedure. Secure the support bar in a vise and position the pivot over the rocker arms. Hold the rocker arm up against the pivot so as not to allow the arm to get between the pivot and support. Start both bolts and take them down evenly before torquing to the proper newton meter tension. Mount the valve train support bar over the five inboard cylinder head bolts with stud heads and secure with five nuts. Take care to draw down the nuts and support bar evenly to mate with the head. Torque down all the nuts to the proper newton meters tension. The exhaust manifold to cylinder block mating surfaces must be coated with dry film graphite before installation. This coating is also applied between the heat stove and exhaust manifold on the left side. The two upper center bolts that hold the exhaust manifolds to the engine are also used to secure the left and right side AIR tubes. Before installing the outer section of the heat stove, the left side AIR tube must be properly fastened in place. Before the rocker covers can be installed, apply RTV sealant and position the triangular seals in the V-shaped notches at each corner of the engine. Before you position the rocker arm cover, apply a continuous bead of RTV sealant on the cover sealing surface. Press the rocker arm cover into position. Install the bolts and torque down to the proper tension. Now we're ready to move on to the HEI distributor, which is installed in much the same manner as in previous applications. First, dip the distributor-driven gear and bearing in oil before they are installed in the engine. As the distributor is lowered into the block, 
Be sure the distributor gear properly engages the oil pump drive shaft and that the rotor is indexed to the proper position. After the distributor is in place, complete the installation of distributor cap and wires. Whenever distributor removal or repositioning is required, you'll need a special tool to loosen and tighten the distributor clamp nut. Two square cut O-ring seals are used to seal the die cast alloy oil filter adapter to the engine. The oil filter mounts to the adapter, which provides for easy service access whenever filter replacement is necessary. The adapter is mounted to the engine with three bolts. The filter adapter is also the locating point for the two oil cooler lines, the oil pressure switch, and two bypass valves. Engine lubricating oil for the 4.1 liter 90 degree V8 engine is directed through an oil cooler in the radiator. Oil enters the pump through a screened intake pickup and is pumped to the oil filter adapter where oil is directed to the cooler. Returns to the adapter, goes through the filter and then on to the passages in the engine. At this point, major engine reassembly is complete except for the flywheel and engine accessories. To sum up, here are the most significant features of the Cadillac HT4100 DFI engine. It's more compact, more lightweight and fuel efficient, as well as designed for improved serviceability. The overall result is an engine design that's going to provide Cadillac owners with the quality service and customer satisfaction they deserve for the investment made. For additional information on the 4.1 liter 90 degree V8 engine, refer to your 1982 Cadillac service information manual or attend the program at your local General Motors training center.